Good morning, and welcome to Virtual Worship for Broadway and Port Colden United Methodist Churches on this Sunday, May 30th. My name is Pastor Catherine, and I greet you from wherever you are joining us from as we come together to worship, to reflect, to deepen, to grow, and to leave transformed. I invite you as we begin our time together to hear today's centering words. The words God speaks are the life and sustenance of all that exists. The life Jesus gives is the recreation and renewed birth of all that is broken and worn. The Spirit's stirring in our souls is the inspiration for creativity, compassion, joy, and community. Life-giving life restoring life fulfilling god may our whole lives be worship in all things may we seek to connect with and to reflect your love and your hope life giving life receiving life fulfilling god let us join our voices from where we are as we sing our opening hymn holy 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 join me in our opening prayer the words will be on the screen let us pray we give you thanks O God that you are one yet three in an internal dance we offer you praise O God that you constantly invite us to dance along even when we feel unworthy you ask us to dance as if no one is watching but we are afraid We hear your call in many ways and through many means as we open our hearts to you. 
May we worship you with the seraphs and proclaim you as the three that are the Holy One. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 3. Hear now the word of God. Now there is a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
I've always been struck by this account in chapter 3 of the Gospel of John. I think most people who have been in church for some um, amount of time have heard John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And that's great. But I would dare to say that most people do not know the story that leads up to those words being said. In chapter 3, we are introduced to a man named Nicodemus, and we find out that he is a Pharisee, a leader um, in that local community. We know that the author of John mentions Nicodemus three times. Once here in chapter 3, when we see him coming in the dead of night to visit Jesus. Once in chapter 7, when they are uh, considering putting Jesus to trial and he advocates for Jesus and, and essentially asks for them to be fair with Jesus um, and to be open to what could be what could be shared. Uh, and then in chapter 19, we find that Nicodemus helps uh, Joseph of Arimathea with the burial of Jesus after the crucifixion, uh, bringing a ton of spices to help with that ritual. It is alluded to within these accounts that not only is he a leader and a well-respected leader, but he is also a man of, of decent wealth. He has some money behind him. But what we find through the questions he asks and the interactions with Jesus and those who followed him is that he has a deep respect for Jesus and his knowledge and for the ministry that he is doing in the world. And so we find this account, this uh, back and forth in the third chapter of the Gospel of John. Now, I've been reflecting on this story the last couple of weeks um, in preparation and usually I have looked at this as he's coming in the dead of night because he's hiding something. He doesn't want people to see him. Uh, he wants this, this visit to be a secret. And as I reread this passage this week, I wondered, what if instead of thinking Nicodemus was being sneaky and, and trying to, you know, subvert whatever. What if we thought that they were friends, that this was not the first time he had come to Jesus, that he knew that coming at night would mean that those who had heard Jesus was there and had come to glean his wisdom and knowledge had gone home. What if coming at night wasn't an act of secrecy, but it was the only time that he knew that he could be relatively alone with Jesus and have an honest and frank conversation. And then I wonder, as I sat with that idea of the questions and the conversation that happens, was he asking out of, um, a need for knowledge or was Nicodemus asking because he wanted to understand more fully this God that uh, he was serving. We know that Pharisees and Sadducees, leaders of um, the synagogues at the time were the head honchos. They knew all of the things and they um their authority was rooted in the fact that they knew more than everybody else. And I'm almost wondering if Nicodemus wanted to wrestle with the word of God, the, the scripture that they had spent their lives studying, that he wanted to get more out of it, that he had questions and he found a uh, equal partner of sorts in Jesus. As I think about this story more, I tend to believe that that is more likely the truth than he's coming in the dead of night to question Jesus 
um, to make sure that he's, you know, on the up and up. And so if we sit with this idea that Nicodemus and Jesus are friends, that this questioning comes from a place of genuine interest and genuine desire for understanding, all of a sudden, for me at least, it becomes a reinforcement of the need, the power, the importance of each of us asking questions. Last week, we celebrated uh, Pentecost, the birth of the church. We celebrated that the Spirit of God came down and that Spirit is still alive and at work among us and in the world today. And so I've been thinking about that. Why this story after the Sunday of Pentecost? And I've been thinking about it <laughs> and, and praying about it and, and writing about it. And what I'm sitting with today and what I would like to offer all of you is the beauty <laughs> that our lives have when we learn to trust in the Spirit's movement. When the Spirit moves in our lives, it is usually unexpected. It has the possibility to inspire and transform us, yes, but the movement of the Spirit also has the ability and the possibility of unsettling us, of offering discomfort, of shaking up the things that we are secure in. When the spirit moves, we find that there is um, more than we can put into words. When the spirit moves, we are invited and urged to move forward in our, our faith, in the way we live out our faith and live out the call to discipleship. When the spirit moves, and we follow our lives and the world do not look the same anymore. So I wonder, what if we thought of this uh, passage as evidence of what happens when the spirit moves? Yes, we get beautiful and amazing interactions like what happened on the day of Pentecost with tongues of fire coming down. But what if we claimed in this time that that is not the only way that the spirit moves and appears in the world? What if we claimed that the spirit is just as present and just as active and just as dangerous in the quiet stirrings of our souls, in the pushes to delve deeper, in the um, ways we are, are shifted and motivated and encouraged. What I do know from this passage and from my own faith journey is we are who we are because of who God is. God has been faithful and God has cared for us. God surrounds us. God goes before us. God loves us just as we are. And so I have to, or if I'm real with myself and if I'm real with all of you, when the spirit moves a lot of the time in my life, it's usually in a place and a space of telling me to release the things that are not of God, that are not 
honoring of God's name that are not helping me live into the call of discipleship that is rooted in our faith tradition of Christianity. What I find is that if I trust in the movement of the spirit, the spirit that invites and urges me forward in life and faith, if I trust in who I am and who God has called and created me to be, what I am being asked and urged and motivated to do by God's spirit is to share and tell my story. To encourage others to share and tell their stories. To make space to create a communal story. Because we find that when we share, we wrestle, we question, is when depth occurs in our lives and in our journey of faith. When we ask questions and delve deeper and allow ourselves to be unsettled and have moments of discomfort, we are able to see the world with new eyes, to experience wonder and awe at all God has done and all that God is doing in the corner that we are in. So we find that the promise that we cling to, the popular verse that we hold, for God so loved the world, is the summation of the questioning that Nicodemus has for Jesus, the conversation that they have together. That God loves us, has loved us, loves us still, and will continue to love us, even in the moments where we are unlovable. And God's love is evident in our relationships and in the, the things that happen in our lives. God is evident. God is present in the spirit that guides us and protects us and shifts us and and moves us forward into being the ones that God has called and created us to be. So this day, we are celebrating the dance of the spirit in the the world and in our lives. We are celebrating that God is inspiring and transforming and unsettling us today and every day. That God loves us and that we are his. So this day, may we go into wherever we are, knowing that God is still writing our story, that God is still shaping us, and knowing that the Spirit is still speaking if we are only willing to listen. So may we open our ears and our hearts and ourselves, and may God continue to be at work in us, through us, and around us. Amen. Thank you.
What is your story? What is your testimony? What is your witness? How has God shaped you and challenged you and disrupted the comfortable spaces in your life? How has God allowed you to witness in wonder and awe God's love at work in the world? It is through the movement of the Holy Spirit that inspires and transforms and unsettles that God has shown up for us and God will continue to show up for us until we take our final breath. So this day, beloved, we affirm that God is still speaking in the world today. We claim, hopefully boldly, that God is a God of love, God loves us how we are, and God calls us to be vessels and bearers of that love in this world. So may we go into this day, may we go into this week, knowing that the God of love is at work among us, that God's spirit of guidance and of protection and of encouragement is with us in all things that the spirit of god is moving helping to shape us into the ones that god has called us to be so may we go entrusting our lives to the spirit at work among us may we go trusting the one who sees all things and loves us still may we go knowing that others will only encounter God through us, through the way that we live in this world. So may we go and may we live and may God be seen in all that we do and may God be honored in all that we do. Go in peace.